Hello, one and all, and welcome to the 251st episode of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast, recorded on Monday, April 22nd, 2024, on the podcast today. We have Night of the Brotherhood of Steel, Andromeda, Clark, I don't know, I panicked there. How do you, how do you Romanify your name, Andrew? I think... On Andros, Andros, Andro? oh, that's huh. Greek, I know, and I think it probably just carried over. Yeah. And An- Andr- Andrakis, I think Andrakis is a Roman name, I'm not sure. Also, admittedly, it would, it would fit with the Brotherhood of Steel if, like, <laughs> they did not know the distinction that had been lost to time to them yeah i mean they don't know that they're speaking latin i i in my head canon they do not understand that like what they're doing is like roman shit they just <laughs> saw like a couple of words on the bill of rights or something and they're like yeah fuck yeah like, that's us that's our whole thing <laughs> Also on the podcast today, we have a man who's about to explain how he would make it in the wasteland, Ryan Holtz. Oh, I would kill myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think Here's a s- neat little hack. Yeah. Hack that doctors don't want you to know to make it more enjoyable in the wasteland. You'll never have to go to the doctor if you blow your fucking brains out. Yeah. I don't know. Would you guys really want to live in the fucking wasteland? Like, want yeah, to? No. It, like, an alternative of living somewhere else would be better, but I'm still not really on the suicide hype train. Mm. It's not the hype train. It's it, that shit sucks, yo. <laughs> and it's never getting better. No. <laughs> they literally talked about that. Uh, maybe I wouldn't kill myself. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'd just pick the faction I'm the most excited about. And just volunteer for the most dangerous jobs. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you know what? If it works, then maybe it'll get slightly better. If yeah, it doesn't work, great. These vault wow. dwellers are weird, but like they got the good food, so we can hang. It's fine. I don't want to live in a fucking vault. Do you guys? Mean, <laughs> no. No. Well, no. that'd arguably be worse than the wasteland. This was the impetus of the question then. Like, who you who you button up with? Are you uh, struggling it out on your own? Just you and a dog versus the world? I guess it depends on the, the, the area we're in. Seems like we've all finished the show mm-hmm. so in the fallout show you probably want to be with Maldavers gang it seems the, like the ncr yeah. yeah it seems like they're the chillest of all the factions they seem like the ones that most want equality for yeah. i mean the wasteland the ncr like canonically in the game and you know it kind of almost seems like the ncr isn't really a thing anymore in the show that they've been like no, beaten into submission mm-hmm. um that like they're they're the regular guys they're the the play it straight try to get like a functioning government and like society with infrastructure going and like that makes them less interesting because it's just we're normal (laughs) but also yeah like definitely the best Mm -hmm. yeah um you have to pick the most moral and yeah i don't know fallout for the railroad i guess even though they're gonna yeah, probably not represent much progress. Mm-hmm. Or maybe the Minutemen, but if you check, if you choose the Minutemen, then you are going with the railroad essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Fallout Three, yeah, I guess the Brotherhood of Steel. Jesus. The uh, I saw some people talking online about like the different endings of the games. We talked about this like a week or two ago, where Fallout Three really only has one ending that makes sense. Like that they really for them. want you to pick. Yeah. Yeah. New Vegas. New especially Vegas has a lot of endings yeah, yeah there's a lot of endings that like i don't know if they've ever established which one seems more canonical or not but like uh it kind of seems like in this show the brotherhood of steel ending is the the canonical ending of fallout 4 mm-hmm. i think it's the isn't it mr house isn't it the house ending is the one that they're now saying is most likely the the mr house ending does not end with like vegas yeah. getting destroyed well, it doesn't. Vegas assumedly gets destroyed afterwards, or it doesn't get destroyed like we saw it at the end. So, oh, yeah, but it's Vegas. But yeah. Okay. The, the lights weren't on. Oh, yeah, that was New Vegas. Oh, yeah, that yeah. was Vegas at game. the end. That was the whole thing. Yeah. Because you could see the strat and everything like that. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, in, in the games, like, that is, 
lit up 24 7 right. all mm. the lights were off it seemed like it was kind of dilapidated so but it was also from the new california republic like I... which also got destroyed so it's kind of like yeah maybe it took a big setback but yeah uh also oh, like... there's only one ending with the new california republic in in new vegas no the new california republic was like running new vegas essentially right no mr house was running vegas and the new california republic was like moving eastward it was trying to expand eastward Mm -hmm. and it got into the new vegas region and so like when you encounter the ncr in new vegas they're like hey we're all new here we're trying to like suss out what's going on we've got some like trade negotiations that we like worked out a long time ago with this dude named house that runs a casino but that's really all we we do is we have like trade caravans that go through here. Do you think you'd like be interested in trying to get these people to turn over to our side, hmm. like to join the NCR? That'd be dope, right? We yeah. have democracy, I think. <laughs> um, I mean, for what it's worth, I Bethesda, Todd Howard, whoever. Um, I don't think they've made any official statements, but they've implied repeatedly, repeatedly that they do not give a shit about new vegas um yeah. and that maybe maybe actually abhor it for quietly being uh better than their games and yeah. made by somebody else <laughs> yeah um i think they asked todd howard and i think like about the canon and he said all of them are canon and they were yeah. like that doesn't make sense and he was like mm. um i mean speaking See. of things that don't make sense hi everyone i'm lucas the writer uh why was moldaver there how was moldaver there unexplained okay yeah. season, season two i'm assuming it had something to do with like the cryo stuff right like yeah i has i'm have. guessing that they would get into that like yeah next season or or something like they, if, if cryo exists in this universe mm-hmm. and like this person shows up hundreds of years later looking more or less the same i'm assuming it has something to do with cryo like uh, it's I mean, it's also a part of the canon that she is a genius. Uh, but also on the outs with Volta, I don't. I, I hope it's something a little more interesting than just oh, she froze herself independently from. The I think group that's of people probably that what makes like, the most sense. I don't think that... independently necessarily. Maybe she no, infiltrated she was on the outs with Volta. Huh? Maybe she infiltrated Volta some way or another and found her way in. And like it sounds like they were gonna let uh, fucking what's his nuts uh, brother. Just randomly take over his dad's cryo pod. Yeah, so. uh, I've said, you mean Rico? Yeah, um, that's his name. His name no, Rico? no, no, that's no. the kid who played Rico in Hannah Montana, dude. Yeah, <gasps> yeah. No way. Yeah. yeah. I was um, trying to place his age. I was like, is he supposed to be just like a little guy, or is he? Supposed I just to had be this a conversation with Jade, like, because <laughs> mo- he's thirty years old. That yeah. actor is thirty, but he is literally half the size of everybody right. else in the vault. He could be thirty, or he could he, be sixteen. Like you, know, he's five no. one. It's because like, he's yeah. got not a young looking face. Like no, <laughs> that is that is a forty year old's face on a fifteen year old's body. That's right. funny. I did not realize that was Rico. That's funny. I listen like this wasn't the highlight of the show by any means. Um, also, listeners, for, yeah, we're just mostly going to be talking about this today. Um, but the fact that Norm had the beginnings of a nihilistic villain arc that was completely mm. upended by the corporate fuckery by like no capitalism is the real villain arc is right. um mm-hmm. fantastic, and that's like. I don't know. I feel like that's how um, that's so much more interesting than like this nihilistic villain in the wasteland. It's a tale as old as time. Nihilist gets turned when they find out that no, there is a meaning and it's fucked. Yeah. (laughs) There is something that's kind of controlling the levers of our universe and it's not good. You should rage against it. Yeah. The average nihilist versus being angry when they find out about shareholders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do we start broad and then just talk about uh, I don't know, standouts as they come along. Um, what do you guys think of the show? How'd you like it? Good. Good. Yeah. No, I think it's a great show. I can't believe how how well they were able to balance being a faithful representation of the universe while also like not completely losing all of its appeal Mm -hmm. towards general audiences and being good TV. Like that's a 
fucking really tough tightrope to walk as we learned with last of us that like tended towards the like more good tv side than the like faithful representation side and like yeah yeah like they they kind of nailed it i think and i don't know how they could have made it any better in that way in terms of like faithful but also not sacrificing television like yeah thank god they didn't try to adapt one of the actual storylines from the video games like this i mean there were so many good references without it being like a sort of tongue-in-cheek like hey guys remember this thing like they really just made you feel like they were in the world with shit that you recognized but were able to do their own thing story-wise but i mean for the love of fucking god the show opens up with like basically the special character creator page where it's like (laughs) hi i'm lucy i'm good with mechanics and guns and wrestling and (laughs) history and those are my stats yeah i'm gonna head out into the wasteland with those abilities like that was fucking awesome yeah there was a lot of stuff that was very tongue-in-cheek for the people who watch the show and like it would just go over the head and not be like trigger like oh that's weird like why why are they talking about this shit for someone who doesn't know the games like they they kind of it, it reminds me of like um with kids movies mm-hmm. when they put in jokes for the adults that like will go over safely go well over the heads of kids and the adults get to laugh at it so it's like it will go over the heads of the regular viewers without triggering like oh what the fuck is happening but mm. still land for the fans of the video games, which I thought was really cool. Mm. Yeah. I saw someone say, like, there there are very few writers' rooms that would have done what they did with the stim packs, because most yeah. everybody would have, you know, had them shoot themselves up with a stim pack, and then as their bullet wound closes, go, huh, that was easy, or some mm-hmm. stupid shit like that. It's like they they don't have to explain this world to the viewer they're just putting them in it and you can figure it out pretty easily like people that don't play the fallout video games were able to understand this world pretty easily i think a lot of it is just accepted you know it's it's a goofy weird wacky stupid world with a bunch of shit going on and like they immersed you well enough where it didn't break anything by like trying to like explain why things are the way that they are because they just are. Yeah. I, it is a wacky, weird, stupid world, um, but also really sad and really anti-American <laughs> in a way that is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I watching the show, I've come to realize this about Fallout Four. I think that that game in burying itself in so much of like colonial America, American Revolution imagery, uh, just that is organically a part of being in the greater Boston area. Um, It loses a lot of that like critique of America, um, which this one nails in spades. Uh, I felt especially through Walter Goggins. I'm I'm not going to call him the ghoul. He is, he is just playing Walter Goggins in this in my mind. Walton Goggins. Thank you. Um, In his storyline in uh, the overt anti-capitalism of the grounded vault tection god fucking because you know that's happening you know the shit they're doing in vault tech in this universe of we are no we're future proof and like we're getting ready for the apocalypse in our bunker in hawaii with mark zuckerberg and we will emerge and we the managerial class will oversee humanity as we are genetically superior genetically designed to do and Hey, if we got to make the end of the world happen for this to be a profitable endeavor, like that's that's built into the spreadsheet. That's built into the Q4 expenses. We can do that. Yeah. Um, that was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. I ugh. And I kind of loved that because at, at first I thought that they were still or I thought that they were kind of giving the game away and being like, oh, they're revealing vault main master plan in season one that's kind of weird like all the vault executives are in cryo and in vault 31 like Mm -hmm. we kind of know what's going on and then i realized no these are the junior executives yeah these are the (laughs) the pencil pushers and the mail boys from vault tech 
that have been quote unquote trusted to lead this next generation. The actual, <laughs> the actual executives in the big leagues are somewhere else doing something else mm-hmm. that, you know, was yet to be revealed. Right. There's always another layer. Yeah. This was just buds, buds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just hanging out brain in a jar. Yeah. I wish I could go to sleep. Right. But I can't basically, basically tasked with just, overseeing vaults it seems like making sure that there are some human beings left when the senior execs come out of cryo to go to the fucking moon which they haven't talked about yet but which i guess that was more of an enclave thing like the enclave is is the remains of the u.s government in vault tech like Mm -hmm. that's a thing Mm. so yeah we're gonna see it it's gonna be great y'all um I, I don't know know how I feel about um, a lot of the monstrosities, a lot of the, what do they call them in universe, like aberrations? uh, Abominations. Abominations, thank you. Um, That's just Brotherhood of Steel. I think that's what the Brotherhood of Steel calls them. Yeah, I don't think that's They call ghouls abominations. Yeah, anything that's like not human 100% is an Mm. abomination. I. did you guys get the sense that um, with Vault 4, they were kind of implying that a lot of those, a, a lot of them come from, um, yeah, like experimentation rather than like natural mutations from the environment? Because that's a that's a pretty big like lore change to this universe, I think, if that's if that's well, the case. Well, openly said that, yeah. Didn't oh, they? so that, okay. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, I mean, know for a fact super mutants were definitely. Right. Like the, the what's what do they call it? FEV? The fo- yeah, yeah, forced, yeah. forced evolutionary, evolutionary virus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's that's all definitely vault right. tech experimentation. So I guess it's not that big of a jump in logic to apply it to most other things. Like yeah. I feel like Yao Guai's and like Death Claws, that's like organic. Rad Roaches, yeah. Bloat Flies, like things that are fully just animals. But, but like, yeah, different. Yeah. Like a centaur and a gulper that like have like some human shit. Yeah, I think that those are all Mm. vault tech shit going on so also i don't even think that they were implying that it was you know all the monsters are because they came out of this vault like i think it was maybe a handful of specific ones okay yeah general general vaults they they really liked gulpers in this tv show um gulpers are not a big i don't even know which game their biggest uh, the far harbor dlc for four right Which, um, I to, Andrew, you'll appreciate this. I'm seeing a lot of people out there saying like, hey, that's actually some of the best Fallout uh, video game you can play um, like within the past five, yeah. seven years. Uh, clearly, they didn't play that rogue ass light puzzle, though. Um, yeah, that one we, was annoying. No, but yeah, no. The mm. rest of the DLC, really good. Ah. They always have that in Fallout, right? Some weird little mini game that you're like, why are we doing this? Yeah. Oh, God, the hacking sequence with Norm. Yeah. yeah yeah the that one that one was maybe one of the more like hey gamers remember this but again still pretty muted yeah, i mm. think it went over people's like angel definitely didn't go like what what's happening so huh. i don't know yeah no it seems like i mean fallout 4 everyone's making memes about like oh no, everyone's going to buy Fallout 4 and be disappointed or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> I don't think they will. I think that's just you, like weird, jaded Fallout fan who's yeah. just like, 4 sucks. It's like, no, I think you didn't like 4. <laughs> but I... Listen, I get it. Like people probably should like jump into this in new vegas uh but also the average tv show watcher does not know how to install all the mods to make vegas run on a modern pc like yeah come on that's a tall order i played new vegas on the ps3 and i i loved that game it was fucking rough though (laughs) that it's no no mods you know 10 year old console at that point that shit was hard I yeah. heard some people just how the game renders and like plays video and images like they can't it gives them a migraine like it physically hurts them to look at that video game. Yeah. Mm. It's a lot of brown. Yeah. Um, The next Fallout game, you should not play as someone from a vault, right? Because I think if this video game, uh, if this TV show has done anything, it has reminded me like how 
rich a universe this is and how, I don't know, interesting. Interesting it would be to have characters like vaguely aligned with different factions, well-established factions in this universe. And then kind of, yeah, loosely form loose, uh, loose alliances is... I, that was like my favorite part of the show and like that could that could not be done in a video game yeah i do feel like the idea of having you start from a vault is that you are like an actual blank slate like for the new viewers it's an easy way to be like because a vault dweller like they show in the show is basically a fucking baby like they're just an underdeveloped yeah like freak who has no idea what's going on and for a video game like that's a good way to introduce someone when everyone's able to just canonically be like oh you have no idea what the fuck is going on like well I'll head down to fucking uh good Diamond springs City and, and yeah. yeah like figure out where to find your son or yeah head down to megaton and figure out where to find your dad like you know like it it's just an easy way to like and down to New Vegas and figure out how to find Matthew Perry. <laughs> well, New Vegas is different because you're not a vault dweller. So right. uh, they, but they you, you, you have, have amnesia. Yeah, you have amnesia. You had a concussion. So they always yeah, have to find a plot shot device. in the head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The worst concussion <laughs> is your brain struck the side of your skull when it was penetrated by a bullet. <laughs> I. Um. Hey, how do ghouls work? Yeah, they, yeah, that's that's kind of new. If anything, that's I think the biggest departure from the game. Yeah, like, yeah. It seems Some... like you just inhale radiation, like pure radiation, and that somehow turns you into a ghoul. Yeah, but... I don't even think that they established that it was. That's kind of what I thought it was at the beginning, where it's like, oh man, there's not enough radiation, so we need to consume this concentrated radiation to, you know, keep being a ghoul, but. They also said that like it's a specific medication for preventing yourself from going feral, which that's that's not a thing in the games. Mm -hmm. There is no ghoul medication. There's the reason that they went feral is because they absorbed too much radiation too fast. Mm. Like ghouls that are regular people don't become feral. Like they don't really. Yeah. Are you sure about that. Yeah. Oh, I definitely thought they did in the games. There, uh, the so the people that became feral ghouls. It's like, so when the bombs fell, almost everybody died. Right. There was a very small amount of people who were able to survive because they took like small amounts of radiation over the right period of time. Most of those turned into feral ghouls because it like degraded their brain. And then a very few small, you know, subset of that were able to like keep their brain intact and stay people. And um, if, if that's not what they're saying. Like really? on, on the wiki, they're saying feral ghouls are ghouls that have lost their ability to reason and have become aggressive. Oh, I always got the into a feral that... state is not fully understood. It is known that as a result of the degeneration of the brain and emerges following the atrophy of higher brain functions. Uh, when the loss of capacity for thought is complete, a ghoul is considered feral. So, yeah, no, I think oh. that's that's canon is that they do turn into feral ghouls. But I think the the new part that they're kind of introducing is a how they become ghouls in the first place, and b the whole like preventing yourself from becoming a feral ghoul, because we definitely don't see that. But we don't have too much of like a ghoul character, and it's somewhat inconsistent, like super mm -hmm. mutants that aren't yeah. super mutants, you know, <laughs> super mutants that are chill. <laughs> like, right. I it just sometimes it's not super consistent in the game. Also, I think I remember that there was. Like there were people that turned into ghouls before the war because of like experiments that right. there was a there was actually a medicine that you could take that would turn you into a ghoul. Mm -hmm. Like some people are speculating that uh, Walton Goggins might have been given something by Vault Tech to keep him alive, but like still wasn't able to get into the the vault, and that's why he became a ghoul. Right. You know, maybe that's what Thaddeus took. <laughs> and that's just, definitely what Thaddeus took. Right? I, I thought right. that they were going like super mutant with him. That oh, he yeah that he was going to turn into a super mutant, but they're like, I think you're a ghoul. It's like, oh, oh, okay. I guess I that's like how it works. We've seen someone turn into a super mutant before, right? And it's like in, fucked in Fallout Four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A guy turned himself into a super mutant so that he could escape into a highly radioactive area. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I think he turned himself back. He, like, you help him turn himself back. Yeah. Right? Like you okay. break into the lab and 
in the Institute and give him the cure. You don't have to. It's a, right. it's a fun <laughs> little side quest. If you want to help this scientist guy out. <laughs> you don't have to do shit in these games. Um, uh, Which I did love. I actually love the introduction of like all non-feral ghouls have to take this medication to uh, keep not being feral. Because you can like so easily imagine how that would play out in a video game. Like in the next Fallout game, if you are able to make your player character a ghoul, it's like, I mean, hey, this is easy mode for like health regeneration, for uh, not having to worry about radiation anywhere. Uh, but also if you, uh, people are going to be more aggressive to you because people are worried you're going to go feral. And also, yeah, you got to take this medicine. You have to spend money to get this medicine. Otherwise, it's just going to be an instant game over. And that right. is, mm -hmm. God, that'd be super cool. But um, I didn't realize that all ghouls, like they look like that because they just take damage and uh, no, they heal the, back with scar tissue. No, the radiation, like, you know, got rid of some of their soft tissue. Right, but like that presumably happens like when Over nuclear time. bombs yeah. drop or when they're in like extremely irradiated areas. Like his, um, oh, I forget what his uh, name is, uh, but that shitty guy who's a great character actor. Um, is he just going to be normal for the foreseeable future and also immortal? You're talking about Thaddeus? Thaddeus, right, yeah. yes. Johnny Pemberton? Johnny Pemberton. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think that's, that's a faker name. name than that is. <laughs> I think I think like that stuff's gonna just fall off over time. I don't also I don't even know if in the games that ghouls like can just get shot and be fine. <laughs> like maybe maybe I just don't remember that. But mm. yeah, no, I I think that like as the ghoulification process happens, like his nose will fall off and shit like that. Okay. I think the idea of the ghouls were like in in our game is that they're more video gamey right like because mm -hmm. yeah in in the video game you a normal human get shot and your legs blow off and stuff and then you're just kind of fine 20 minutes mm -hmm. later like it's it's i think i think that was the idea that they're going for is like ghouls are more outwardly that like when when he's just tanking bullets in philly yeah that was just video like, gamey shit right yeah. yeah that's what happens in a video game you get shot a ton and it it doesn't even affect like you don't feel pain you just keep shooting like it's totally yeah. fine and you're a normal human so i think that's the idea they oh, also my. killed those ghouls like the feral ghouls at the super duper mart like with bullets you know like they just killed them with guns so i don't really know how it works because right. yeah thaddeus got shot in the neck with an arrow and like, yeah, you're fine because you're a ghoul. But like other <laughs> other people got shot that were ghouls and they died. So I don't I don't know how it works. I mean, maybe feral. Nah. Feral ghoul is the only one that we see shot, right? Yeah. So maybe feral ghouls lose that regen ability for whatever reason. Like maybe yeah, in the I part of the know. brain that is d d dissolved. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was I got a shout out. Uh, surprise, Fred Armisen uh, jump scare. That, that's always appreciated. That's the best use of yeah. Fred Harmison. Well, what about fucking surprise Matthew Barry uh, jump scare? <laughs> oh, Godsworth. They, they, and yeah. in person. Matthew Barry, yeah. yeah. I'm Live going action. to harvest your organs. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Going home to a robot talking to me in my voice. It's yeah. weird. Um, oh my god, speaking of video gamey, like I don't... I know it was wildly impractical and kind of dumb, but holy shit, people look cool in the power armor without the helmet. Like we should more of that, please. Come on, yeah. Fallout. They got that in Fallout Four. Yeah, yeah. You dance. Helmet off. Yeah. Well, in like dance, there's characters in Fallout Four that do mm. that shit that are just like in their power armor with no helmet. And they're just like hanging out. We me and Angel on our playthrough. We're heading to Diamond City, and all of a sudden, there's a lot of gunfights outside the Cambridge mm. Police Department. And it was like, "Oh, should we check that out?" And then we went, and then there was dance. And she was like, "Ah, Brotherhood of Steel." And I'm like, "Yep, they're here." And so now we're sidetracked already, which I loved that line from the Ghoul: "Thou shalt be sidetracked by every goddamn thing." Um, uh, oh. <laughs> The charisma of Walter Goggins at the end Walton, of the Super Walton. Walton, God fucking damn it. 
I think, keep thinking Walton is the wrong way to say it. I'm mm. the charisma of Walton Goggins that at the end of the Super Duper Mart episode, an episode that was not about him, <laughs> to just waltz in and be like, "Oh shit, they got all the medication I could ever need." Oh shit, they got drugs. Oh shit, they got TV. <laughs> oh shit, they got me on this TV. Yeah, yeah. Not how I thought I would get here, but pretty good day. Yeah. And I I kind of thought they were going to go with like kind of the cliche like, "Oh man, he remembered he used to be a man and he, you know, played these heroes in the movies and he's going to change his ways to, you know, try to be more of a human being." No. Drugs. He's still a fucking piece of shit. Like he <laughs> And the, the rest of the series, he's just like, yeah, I murder even more now. <laughs> it's great. Uh, that was just him having a good time relaxing on drugs. Yeah. yeah he, when, when she shoots he is him with gone. A, yeah. She shoots him with a tranquilizer. You know, that's a yeah. drop in the bucket of a whole lot of drugs. Yeah, this man is gone. It's been 100%. like 250 years. He's not coming back. He is. He's a bad dude. He's gone in the like most lovable way, right? Like, yeah, he's, he's gone in a way that we all see ourselves when we play Fallout. Like, yeah, he's adapted to the wasteland. He is. Yeah. He's the dude. I'm you, honey. Just give it some time. Oh, fucking and, yeah. She does mind. that at the end. Mm -hmm. oh. She is becoming him because that's what the universe does to you. She doesn't give a shit about Thaddeus, like or not Thaddeus. Um, uh, Maximus. Maximus. Maximus just like openly lying to her about everything basically because eh, he seems kind of nice wait i thought the brotherhood of steel were the good guy it's complicated yeah. I'm, i am glad that they didn't do that trope where she's like you lied to me and then like the <laughs> weird breakup and then like get back together or say you know like that it's just like eh, okay <laughs> let's move on like i'll i'll forgive i probably yeah. won't forget all right <laughs> Like this Sounds place good. sucks. Like yeah. you know, you kind of got to do what you got to do. I get mm. it. Right, that's fair. Titus I, seemed like an asshole. Yeah, it is. I don't know, the writing is the writing is good in that, like, when these characters who are all kind of assholes, they're not assholes in a cynical way. They're assholes in a very like self motivated way. Yeah. Or like, anyway, Maximus like, sucks, but like in a way that you you get it. Right. That he just so, I don't know, just so desperate to like, I don't know, have any idea of like identity to hold on to of like, oh, this is how I can be a good person by being a knight in the Brotherhood of Steel and then just not being able to reconcile like internally that they are not, they can never be that. He can never be a good person in that organization. Um, Or Cyclops. Uh, uh, Cyclops Chris Parnell, yeah, like, ostensibly like, oh wow, they're they're kind of doing the best, like any the most yeah. morally correct stuff any vault can. Vault He's... four is is the like moral paragon of the yeah. land, and they're still like in some sort of weird death cult. Yeah, and like he's a uh, I don't know if it's classism or racism, but like it's racism, right? It's, he's in like a <laughs> yeah. he's a racist. We call him surfies. <laughs> Yeah, we can't call them surfies, even if it's really funny. <laughs> you tell one joke and suddenly it's the whole thing. What was the joke? I don't remember, but it was a bomb. <laughs> no, he's like, yeah, they they've nailed it. It's he is the modern like neoliberal establishment yeah. of the United States, where it's like he's learned to rein in his worst things and has found a way to get a delicate balance of like, all right, everything works. People are reasonably happy. Like that's, that's 99.9% .9 better than anything in the vault, basically that are in the wasteland that we've ever seen in the fallout universe. And yeah, death cult or not, like they then go back to their normal lives after their little ceremony. And yeah, have fun. <laughs> they don't even execute people that, you know, <laughs> that was by so great. anywhere else in this world definitely would have been executed. By banishment to the surface. And you're Where's... only getting two weeks two of supplies. Two weeks of supplies. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. I I will point out that was a little bit of a... Um, uh, that, that was a little bit of a plot contrivance that uh, Vault 4 just got uh, their power armor back 
when everyone involved is terrified of the serpents. Like as a rule, I guess they're letting people in, but I thought that was a little. No, I think they, the vault people. They say are there's scouts. The surface. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. say that there's scouts for them that are on the surface. Like so, yeah. they they are an organization. Like they, yeah, they have people that are assumedly like. Yes, I'll go up there. Like I came from there. I'll figure things out. Like it reminds me of Fallout Shelter. If you guys ever played that mobile game where like you can you build your shelter and everything like that, your vault, and then you can send people out into the wasteland and they gather resources and bring them back to you. And yeah. It's it's Fallout our Vault 4 is very much like the mobile game, which is kind of funny. Mm. Even to the <laughs> point where yeah, you're like capturing people from the surface and bringing them in 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 the mobile game you build a radio station mm. that says come on down it's great and then you and then you sentence them to working in the boiler room for the rest of their lives oh, oh wait, you got the strength all right the fucking radio tower like i i yeah. forgot to bring that up like that was, yeah where he's, he even brings out his radio and then like dials it in and like points it in the direction and knows where to walk mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because of all the fucking radio side quests in those games and it's like yeah the radio station that plays one kind of music they have half a dozen songs and they play them over and over and over again <laughs> I, I, these are the original recordings you don't get come on you, listen listen to the fidelity the yeah. yeah and it like kind of sucks like the yeah in the background the audio is not good <laughs> like oh yeah i mean you can definitely hear that on the well i mean it's in that oh yeah yeah in <laughs> that yeah uh fred armison i well um hey is vault 33 still running out of water was that ever no. addressed no. They dropped that, right? Like, isn't that the idea is that, like, it was more to show that, like, those other two guys would have been somewhat incompetent mm -hmm. and, like, <laughs> you say it now. And he's like, well, okay, we have a crisis on our hands. Like, I'm assuming that, yeah, that's just a normal everyday crisis that you wouldn't normally want 200 people to hear about because it would cause chaos and panic versus I, um... just taking care of it yourself. Uh. Totally, but I think that's actually like the inciting incident for the first Fallout game. It is. You're the, leaving the, the water chip. Yeah, you leave yeah, yeah. the water chip. Right. But like, yeah, they, there's other vaults. Like, I'm assuming that it's all... Yeah, they, they might get it from Vault 32 because they, you know, they sent half the people in there to live now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe maybe it'll be a thing. Maybe they bring it up and go, oh, man, and we still have to ration water because we're sharing two water chips, like shit like that. But... Mm. Yeah, what's going to happen to Norm? Is is he going to go in the cryo chamber, or is season two going to open up with Betty finding him or something? Yeah, is Betty? Where's Betty in all this? She was she was the assistant, right? In the yeah, flashbacks? I think that's what's implied. Yeah, yeah. So she's she's Vault Tech, that's for sure. There's no way around mm -hmm. that. She's from thirty one. Actually, wait, now that I say that, that makes, I uh, had a pause and the Amazon X-ray labeled that character Young Betty. So, yeah. yes, absolutely. And I think that one point no, it, it was the name Betty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And it's so. her, but like digitally de-aged or something. Oh. oh, she's on screen? I don't remember that. Yeah. No, uh, like she, passing, but yeah. yeah, when uh, Walton Goggins is spying on his wife and he's sitting out in the room, right. like she comes out and she's like, do you want any coffee? And he said, no, thanks, Betty, you know, yeah, or something like that. And it's her. Mm, right like her face put on someone else's body but did anyone else age. not get that like impression when they first started that his wife was like super high up in vault tech i kind of thought she was like lower a low level marketing manager and like all of a sudden yeah. she's like second in command in negotiating this capitalistic truce like what yeah i mean it also like it definitely takes place over several years that that's going on so she might have like mm. worked her way up during that time we've all worked in corporate america you don't go right. from low level marketing manager to like coo in i kind of we don't, we don't know what her position was but in the first couple flashbacks i kind of thought she was his agent like why well, how is mm. How is she just around on set all the time? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, but it sounds like she was, I, by every indication, from that uh, really well-shot boardroom uh, scene. Um, yeah, she was she was acting on behalf of someone actually important at vault Tech. Right. Yeah. If you're in that meeting, no one else in that, no, no, no other company had multiple representatives. 
And it was, yeah, it was literally Mr. House. Like, it is the heads of these other companies. Mm -hmm. I don't know that Bud yeah, is the CEO of Vault Tech, but like... He's, no, I mean, that's what I mean, is that, yeah. like, she's an executive, I'm pretty sure, but I don't think that she's, like, in charge of everything. She's probably a lower-level executive, you know, because Bud was there. and Bud was only important enough to get put in the junior executive vault. I don't think like, he got put in there. I think... Bud wanted to run that shit, right? Like, wasn't that the idea? It seemed that's the oh. impression that I got is that like he wanted Bud's buds to succeed oh. or whatever, and he was going to run that part. Hey, I'm sorry if this is a thing that we knew already, but uh, the Fallout wiki is saying that the Robco representative in that meeting is Mr. House. Mr. Yeah, House, yeah. Is. Oh, so that's we, what okay. we're saying. No, yeah, yeah. I didn't put that together. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Mr. So the House of, was the head of Robco. Mm. Yeah, so it's the heads of all these other corporations. And it, to me, it wouldn't make any sense to then have Bud, who I'm assuming is pretty senior, and a random low-level executive versus, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that Bud is like CFO or something, like probably not the head of Vault Tech because they have to save a reveal, right? <laughs> like for later seasons. Right. Bud um, Askins is a senior junior vice president. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's perfect. It's, that's just tongue in cheek. Yeah. Yeah. Cause nobody knows what, you know, what the fuck that means. Like, senior that is... junior vice president. It's fuck. What? God. There's no such thing as a junior vice president though. I just, no. <laughs> I yeah. get that it's double speak and like funny, like post, uh, what's it called? What what is, what is that? Uh, late stage capitalism, right? Bullshit, but mm -hmm. yeah. It. Oh. And then on Barb Howard's uh, wiki page, it says that she is a high ranking executive. So, so if uh, he's a senior vice president, then yeah, he's like, I think that's senior vice president. Kind of is the senior junior, yeah, <laughs> like executive. Like they are the most senior of the non like yeah. High, he's, high. He's probably class. like number seven in command or some shit like that. But yeah, he's not. Come on he's, now. Yeah, I think he's like top ten, top twenty. Like he's up there. And then she, so she would have to be also pretty senior, like around I, there. So they it, seem like they treat each other more like colleagues than ones above the other. I, yeah, yeah. It was a little ham fisted. Um, or the ham fisted is a too negative a term. It was a little blunt, but just the. <laughs> The show pointing out, the show taking the time to explain, like, how a lot of people come to realize that capitalism is a flawed system in that under capitalism, like, there's no, corporations aren't motivated to do, like, anything for the public good. Right. So, they cannot, you cannot trust them. You cannot trust companies to have your best interest in mind, and... Like that being taken to the extreme in Voltex case, but that was, I, I don't know. I guess I appreciated that, even if, even if it was a little looked at the camera moment. Yeah, I mean, like mm -hmm. Fallout games are pretty overtly political. Oh, yeah. Like that's their whole thing is that it's a Fallout went woke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what they'll say. Yeah, a I know woman that. main character. Meanwhile, every single game you could have played as a woman, you just yeah. chose to play as a man. Yeah. <laughs> Like the the game is, is very anti-American, anti-capitalist, talking about the the dangers of factionalism and racism and, and corporatism. Yeah, it's yeah. the logical end point. We have a finite amount of resources. What if we created this weird race to the bottom uh, that treated resources as infinite <laughs> until one day we had a reckoning? <laughs> what if... Well, looks like nuclear apocalypse is no. the most likely answer there. So maybe our apocalypse is different, but that seems seems to be where we're all heading mm -hmm. as as the Trump trial rages on. He rage is on to us. He's been asleep for most of it, so he doesn't know. He's on a what? <laughs> Your Honor, I was not conscious for most of this hearing. <laughs> Surely that's yeah that's what he tells his followers the fake news media would have you believe that i was in a courtroom and that there was a trial but that's but all look at me fake news i'm asleep in this <laughs> quote-unquote trial does that sound like me do i seem yeah. like the kind of guy that would be asleep during his own trial i'm not no. a low energy loser i would never that, that can't that be me i definitely wasn't on trial <laughs>
It's all fake news, baby. Deep fakes. That guy set himself on fire outside of my trial as a deep fake. That's not real. Did we find out why he did that? Yeah, he had a whole manifesto and shit. He believes that like the Simpsons were like com- like one of the many complicit like propaganda wing. Like it was weird, dude. <laughs> okay. Well, there was another self-immolation. I didn't hear about this one. Outside of Trump's trial. Yeah. Wait, another one? Or what do you mean by another? Well, there was one a couple weeks ago. Like oh. for a... Uh... Like a yeah, guy is. in the military did it because of Gaza. But yeah. yeah, no, it is becoming more and more popular. But yeah, no, there was a self-immolation outside of Trump's trial. It was pretty wild. CNN had like live footage of it. Just like there is a man on fire. Like, holy shit. So it is becoming a thing. I mean, it's very effective, like in terms of getting your message out there. It is one of the few things you can do nowadays. So can't help but see why people would choose to do that like it's at least not harming other people like i feel like the other way people choose to do that is mass shootings yeah so at least this way they're just because yeah if you just shoot yourself in the head no one's going to read your suicide note but if you make it this big grand gesture very public in front of a lot of people then yeah it'll uh it'll actually do it that's been effective it's been an effective way to raise awareness since the 60s yeah vietnam man Mm. it's real shit um, I know we got a tight out, but uh, we want to talk about the Bucks quick and the pleasant surprise of uh, last night's game. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Bucks are here. Damian Lillard. That's why you fucking brought me here. Yeah. Literally. Same time, man. We get Love one that. half of Damian Lillard and that's all we need. Dude, his aura in the second half was crazy. I, yeah. I, I've watched some recaps and basically all of Chris and Bobby's points came from them like way over hedging dame yeah i know he was getting like double and triple teamed yeah yeah, he didn't have to like score to 30 35 points in a playoff game is really good yeah that's that's insane for a first half like that's all he (laughs) needed to do that's fine but yeah you're like you're right he had an impact on the game it's not like he started shooting zero percent he 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 didn't didn't fall off a tyrese halliburton and just disappear when his team needed him the most he was still impacting the game very heavily yeah I, I, if you listen to him if you listen to him in the post-game interviews it's like the man really doesn't want to have to go to coachella again and this is yeah. the only way he can avoid going to coachella like, i had like a two-year summer basically and it sucks done with that <laughs> i mean yeah this without Giannis, it's kind of sad this is still the best supporting cast that Damian Lillard has had in his career. <laughs> yeah. Which is it's, really sad. The the team minus Giannis is still a playoff caliber team. Like yeah. that's still got that's an all star. <laughs> yeah. Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, yeah. you know, and then even get, like role players like Pat Bev, Bobby Portis, like Bobby's probably going to be Bobby's, sixth man of the year. No, he's not. You don't Miles think so? He's going to beat him. Yeah. Uh, it's cool that he's a finalist, but no, he's, he's not going to win sixth man of the year damn so sad yeah it is a little sad but i mean the third or you know second or third best sixth man is not yeah, <laughs> significantly worse than the best sixth man like, he's the eighth man of the year <laughs> I, <laughs> gradually uh, we talked a little bit about this during the game how the sixth man i don't know that's i don't know it's weird it's weird that there is such a connotation to being a non-starter when right. like that's just it's how a scheme works though. out sometimes like that right, but it's, it's you not can like still get more minutes just the backup yeah, yeah you but no that's what i'm saying yeah, like, yeah, yeah you're saying like a lot of times the sixth man of the year gets more minutes than some of the starters on their team and it's like so just because they're not on the floor for the tip off <laughs> they win sixth man of the year when like they're practically starting like sometimes they even close out the games pretty consistently and it's like so really it's just like they they have a rotation and they prefer this starting rotation, but they still acknowledge that you're actually like good enough to start, even on their team, let alone mm. the other 29 NBA franchises that most like the, the six man of the year finalists would start on at least 20 NBA teams. And for some fluke, whether it's, you know, positional hierarchy at their team or just, you know, they're so stacked on their starting lineup, like they don't start. So, yeah, it's a weird award. Yeah. But no, it's it's fun. It's cool. You're recognizing people that aren't like 
the superstars, which I always find important. So, hmm. Is that like, that's what, um, uh, what's his name? Alex Caruso said, because he came out of the G League. He's basically like everyone in the G League, like, or not everyone, but a lot of people in the G League are elite level scorers. Like they put up 35 points per game in the G League and they could absolutely score on an NBA team. But the issue is, is that they want to be fucking LeBron James. <laughs> mm. Most teams in the NBA don't need a LeBron James. They need a guy who's going to fucking scrap for rebounds and play good defense. Like be the janitor is basically what he said. Don't try to be the CEO. Like you, I, there, there's a reason you're in the G League. You're probably never going to be good enough to be a CEO. Be the janitor and you'll have a job in the NBA. Like there's a lot of dudes that have had a like a long career from just I, scrapping yeah, for rebounds and, yeah. and getting some, Pat Bev's stat line at one point was <laughs> two points, seven rebounds, seven assists with great defense. And it's like that's a great stat line in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the defector article I linked had such Pat Pat Bev disrespect. Oh yeah, he's a <laughs> controversial guy in the league because he's an asshole and he's, he's very a, he's aggressive and yeah. Which so is Bobby. We love him, but Bobby yeah, no, is Bob, a, Bobby's a fucking nightmare, dude. <laughs> Bobby's so a guy aggressive. you do not want to be on the other team. <laughs> he got in like three fights yesterday. <laughs> like that that dude is hot headed. I, I I maintain I maintain that a big part of us. Uh, oh God, was that two or three years ago now when we won it all? Um, big part of that was PJ Tucker just being a junkyard yep. dog and bringing that yeah. energy. And, and that that's was, what Pat Bev is. Big. Yeah, um, that's why like we brought him in. We needed that shit. Like straight up. Like if if we end up winning it all, we're going to look back on this season as like the Pat Bev trade is the turning point in the same way that PJ Tucker was. Like we rented him. Brought him in. I'm sure he's, if we win a championship and he plays a significant role, he'll sign somewhere else for a decent chunk of money, just like <laughs> PJ Tucker. And, but it'll be, wow, thanks for the memories, Pat. Like, you came in and got it done. Like, it's great. No one, no Bucks fan better disrespect PJ Tucker because no, he had a never. huge role in our championship. Mm. Like, that, that is, he, he is probably a top five most important player in us winning a ring. Like, Mm. It, that was huge and that that hopefully will be pat bev if something similar comes along the fact that he's able to just step into the starting lineup towards the end of the season and that we held the top scoring nba team to under 100 points their lowest scoring output of the season in game one of the playoffs like yeah no it's yeah significant from where we were with adrian griffin Right. I, we we can't count on this long term though because they no, missed not. so many fucking threes like Absolutely that not. that's not going to that's not sustainable. <laughs> they, but even at them, the Pacers average like right. 125 points a game. Like they're literally the top scoring team in the NBA. So even if they shoot at a season average clip, we're still holding them under their season average. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I mean, it, that, that's why it's a series, right? Like this could have been a statistical fluke. Yeah. There might be a mean regression here, but like, boy, does it feel really encouraging as a Bucks fan who kind of holding on to the hope that like, hey, if if people can dial in, we're going to be great. The question is if that can happen. And I, that happened last night. So cool. Just have to have it happen, what, three more times and then whole new series. The Jet was interesting. Like, I think the Pacers can adjust to us. But the issue is, is that in theory, eventually Giannis is going to come back. So they could get their feet under them and maybe grab a game in Indiana, maybe even mm -hmm. two. But then Giannis is going to come back, and that strategy that they figured out for our Giannis-less offense will stop It's going to go out the window. Like, Kenny the Jet was pointing out, like, the reason that Dame was so effective in that first half was from, like, for example, on this Brook and Roll, uh, Brooke Lopez pick and roll, Brooke is able to pop out to the three-point line, and Miles Turner can't just, like, crash – down to the rim to protect against Dame like he could if he was guarding Giannis. But because it's Brooke, like you got to respect the fact that Brooke Lopez can shoot that wide open three. And so he has to kind of fade out, open up space, Dame attacks, easy bucket every single time. So like in a weird way, their system was kind of designed to stop Giannis. And I'm not saying we'd be more effective than if Giannis was on the floor, but there was instances where it worked out in our favor not having Giannis in the lineup. Dame is a ball-dominant player at the end of the day. And 
Like he, he's going to be most effective with the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe we're going to learn lessons from these playoff games without Giannis that we can apply even when Giannis is on the floor. It's I mean, even, even the year that we won it all, like we basically played most of that Hawks series um, without Giannis, you know, and, and Brooke Lopez came in and did old Brooke Lopez shit. Um, like the, yeah. and that was a completely different team, but I don't think the Hawks knew how to defend the team without Giannis. Yeah. It was because and... we adjusted, you know, right. but, you know, you know, for what it's worth, he adjusted, which was good. But yeah. I don't think the Hawks did. And Chris Middleton's still a guy, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Chris he's... Middleton is a fucking bucket, dude. Like, I, I hate when I see Chris Middleton slander. Has he lost like half a step? Absolutely. Like, is he as good on defense as he once was? Yeah. That dude can fucking shoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. People are talking about like washed Clay Thompson and stuff. That dude's washed. Like that dude's legit washed. He's he's struggling to like get his shots up in the way he used to. Fucking Chris Middleton, you get him the ball on ISO. He's a fucking sniper. Like it's ridiculous to watch him play. So I just I, I don't know, man. Like I get it. The Celtics look imposing. <laughs> like it'd be insane to assume that we can like beat them off of one playoff game. But like fuck, man, you gotta love how we look. Oh, Celtic scary. Yeah. Celtic scary with Drew. Celtic scary without Drew. Celtic scary Dude. with Drew. It's really Celtic scary with Kristaps Porzingis. And then yeah. also Drew on top of it. It's like, <laughs> what? That is ridiculous, dude. They their top six could compete with most teams' top three. Like, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Oh. Um huh? is that it? Tighter one? We good? We winded down. Anyone else have something That's to it. shout out? Nope. Uh, no. All right. Um, I'm barreling towards the end of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so I might talk about that at length. Um, and then probably write about that. Some someone will pay me to write about that. Someone wants those thoughts. But thank you all so much for listening to episode 251 of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast, almost certainly titled "That's the Guy Who Played Rico in Hannah Montana, Dude." If you like what you heard, like, comment, subscribe, etc. Check us out Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for highlight clips. Act the link in the description. Join our Patreon and join the likes of Tiffany Cole and Psyche Badger in supporting us. Um, yeah. Have a great week, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.